This podcast is intended for adults 18 years and older. It contains explicit language and sexual situations. All thoughts and opinions expressed are of our own and not of those of any specific group, employer, or individual, and is not intended to take as professional advice. Welcome to the Foreplay Podcast. Join the journey, experiences, and sexual adventures of two high school sweethearts navigating their way through the swinging lifestyle as millennials. Come along for the ride. Let's play. Hey everyone, welcome to the Four Play Podcast. I'm Bella. I'm Jace. And a real quick disclaimer, so we are actually re-recording this first podcast and the next two. During around the fourth one, we had somebody point out to us that Multiple we were saying just Yeah, that we were saying like too much. We listened back to all those and we definitely have a tendency of saying like way too much. I don't know if it's a generational thing that we were raised saying like way more, but we wanted to go back, re-record these first three podcasts just so it was more of an enjoyable experience for you guys to listen to. I know we still say like occasionally, and we're trying to get way better at that, but we are going to retell the story. This is kind of a little bit of a backstory about us, how we got into the lifestyle, and then our first lifestyle experience. So I think we should just jump in with saying maybe how we met. Yes. So we met in elementary school. I was, were we 10? 9 or 10? Yeah, right, 9 or 10. And we were on a jump rope team together. I don't know if you had um, jump rope for heart back in the day in elementary school, but our school had a jump rope for heart team where we would go and do performances for different schools. And Jace's mom was the PE teacher. And I had just moved from California to Oklahoma, and it was my first year to try out for the drum rope team, and I made it and everything. And because it was my first time, I had to travel to the school with his mom and him and then another girl who was, it was her first time. And so that was the first time we met. And yeah, and then it must have been my ninth grade year and your 10th grade year. So when we were on 15, we were, we rode the same bus. I was on transfer because my mom was a teacher, so I didn't live in the same city. So when I got transferred, me and you started riding the bus again together or yep. together for the first time, I guess, because we were in the same high school at that point. So we rode the same bus. Yeah, we were in different grades. And so mm-hmm. that's why we hadn't rode the same bus for high school, middle school prior to this. But you forgot that we actually had crushes on each other. Do you mm-hmm. remember? Yeah. yeah. And so that very first day that we met when we were traveling um, to that school, we, whenever we were riding in the car together, we had to sit next to each other and we were like flirting like the whole time. Yeah. Right? Whenever we were like <laughs> nine and 10. So it really was love at first sight. So, yeah. You know, fast forward, however many years later, 15, now we oh. ride the same bus and yeah. we asked for my phone number. Yeah. And then we started dating when we were 15 and then we got married after high school. We got married after college, actually. We got engaged, I think, when we were 19 or 20. And then we got married when we were 22, 23. <laughs> you got right? all this. I so thought we were married th- when we were 23. Yeah, yeah. We got married when we were and we 23. Must have been, and we must so have been I, like 20 or 21 when we got engaged, right? Yeah. But you said 19. And then you said before that that we got married after high school. Well, we did get married after high school. Oh, yeah. College is after <laughs> high school. That? Anyways. <laughs> um... We had been together that whole time, never broke up, weren't expecting that, but we went through everything together and were each other's first kiss and uh, never had sex with anybody else before each other. And we were dating for three years before we even lost our virginities to each other. So Mm -hmm. we had a long journey and it's just crazy to see where we're at now because we're in the lifestyle six years now. Yeah, six or... Maybe even seven? No, I think it's six. Yeah. I think it's six years now. <laughs> My numbers are clearly not always right. I don't know how exactly it got brought up first, but I want to say at one point, because we had never experienced anything else, this was when we were probably 21, Yes, I and, think. Well, before even this, we were both really 
uh, insecure with our looks just mm-hmm. in general. And so I was extremely overweight, like obesely overweight at this point. I mean, from I think what, 17 to 19 was really bad. Yeah. And you were really, really skinny. At one yeah. point I was uh, over a hundred pounds more than you were. Remember? Like, right. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> so we it was, just- a, it was crazy. We were so and unconfident in ourselves. Like I remember that Victoria's Secret commercials would come on and you would have me not watch them because yeah. you didn't even want me to see anybody else. And I think that came from probably an insecurity of you thinking I would look at them and think, well, they, think, think they, were they were sexy and you yeah. weren't or something like that, which makes sense. And then we were so insecure at the time, both of us. I think that comes from a lack of experiences in life and only having each other and then also I don't think either one of us were truly happy with ourselves at all and if you're not happy with yourself it's very hard to be confident in everything yeah let alone Do you like think that's wanting like, to bring other people into the bedroom yeah and so <laughs> but then at that point when we were at 21 we had moved we were in our third year of college and our first two years of school, we stayed in our hometown at college and then we moved for our third year of college. And we, at that point, I feel like we both looked a lot better. I had gained some weight. You had, I had lost a lot of weight. uh I finally found my confidence. Um, within a year, year and a half, I think I had lost 80 pounds or something like that. So I was finally feeling really good about myself. And this was right before we ended up moving out to college. Um, I had asked you if you had ever wondered what it would be like to even kiss someone else. And I don't know where that thought really came from, Mm. but it definitely wouldn't have ever come up if I wasn't confident in myself yeah and so yeah So, uh, I think that had a lot to do with like where we are here now a hundred percent but I had asked you and you said yeah I said (laughs) I had always been curious because we also didn't really touch on this at all but we didn't go to parties in high school we didn't drink until we were 21 we didn't do any of those things what we did for fun was hang out with each other, and that was kind of it. So I think that both of us wondered, what did we miss? Mm-hmm. You know, so many of our friends dated around in high school, you know, slept with all these people, did all of these things, and partied, and we just didn't do that. That just wasn't the life that we liked at the time. We wanted to hang out with each other and go to the movies and walk around the mall and go on dinner dates and that's it (laughs) that's it that's what we like to do and we didn't want to drink we didn't want to do any of those things and so I think when you asked me that question I had thought about it because if you've never experienced anything else you do wonder not that you're missing something but what else is it like yeah just what else is out there not that we didn't want to be together or that we wanted we were bored of each other or anything like that it was just more experimentation even like Mm -hmm. what is it like to even kiss somebody else which i think is what a lot of people do when they're 15 16 17 18 years old yeah especially those first two years of college i think kids drink and have these experiences to experience life in a way to see what's out there and see what you like and we missed, I don't want to say we missed out on that because we didn't miss out on anything, but we didn't have those experiences. And so that's what I think made both of us curious to what else was out there. Mm-hmm. And so that brought us to, we watched a porn together, I believe was the very first thing that we did. Yeah. And we way. copied it. <laughs> yes. And I it remember was. it was Tiffany Thompson. If you guys have ever seen her, she used to be a little porn girl. I thought she was a porn girl. She was I, a porn star. A porn star. <laughs> she was so cute. And she did everything with her boyfriend or husband. I don't know the relationship status, but <laughs> they did everything. And we watched that and we copied that. And that was the first thing that we ever did together. Which was super crazy. The fact that I even wanted you to see another person naked together. It was, I remember that was a really big step. So we've yeah. done that. And then that kind of opened up everything. We talked about how 
Uh, we were planning on going on spring break. Uh-huh. Like that next year, was it? I think or? we talked about this like maybe at Christmas time or something. And then I think that I suggested, what would you think about going to spring break? Yes. And we had said, we, we live in Texas and we were going to go to South Padre for spring break, which was such, that was the biggest place that you could go to party in Texas. And, oh, sorry, we were in Oklahoma at that point still, but that was the closest place we could drive. And we had no money because we were in college <laughs> So we we decided to go down there and spend two days for spring break. And I remember we had talked about it and we said we were okay with kissing other people. Obviously, we had to both look at them and say that was okay, but we were okay with the idea of that. Yeah. And then we also said that possibly – or that you were okay doing stuff with girls. And then possibly if it happened to happen, we were okay – having me get a double blow job because we had watched more porn together and I thought that was the sexiest thing. And we said, so maybe if something happened, we were okay doing that. Yes. So that's how we went into the mindset of spring break Mm -hmm. and we partied like normal college kids. (laughs) And I remember the first night we were really drunk and I don't remember how do you, I guess you can tell the story because I know you kissed somebody that night, which was a huge first step, but I don't know how that came about exactly. Do you remember? We were walking around the club or the bar. It was packed. And this guy had a British accent and he was talking to me. And I said, oh my gosh, are you from England? Are you British? And then he took out his ID to show me. I don't know. I remember this so clearly. He took that out to show me. And then I looked at you and I said, hey, is it okay if I kiss him? And then you said, yeah. And so Mm -hmm. then I asked if I could kiss him or maybe I asked if he would kiss me. And he said, yeah. And so then we did. And he was with his other friend or something. And we made out for five seconds or something like that. How did you feel when you saw that? I was like, okay, that's cool. Like it didn't, did it affect you? It didn't affect me in any way except a kind of positive way. I thought it was cool to see you doing that. And I liked that I didn't feel any sort of weirdness because we'll get into it later. I like to watch you have sex with other people. Mm -hmm. That like is a turn off for me. Watching you kiss him wasn't necessarily a turn on for me, but the fact that you looked like you enjoyed it and that I didn't feel any sort of animosity or weirdness. I was like, okay, this is a step in the right direction. So that's kind of how I felt about it, if that makes sense. And it's not like I was super turned on by kissing him. It was more that is the only other person I've ever kissed before. So that was an interesting experience. And then I really wanted you to kiss somebody. Yeah. So we had tried to find, I don't know, it was just awkward. Yeah. So you had wanted somebody to kiss me. And I will say, I still, I had got a lot of confidence, but I still wasn't super confident in myself. And I think part of that reason was because I was still a skinnier kid. I'm still a skinnier guy. I'm not huge, but I was so much smaller than I am now. And I had had no other experience with any other woman ever. Like no flirt game. You didn't yeah. know how to put a move on anyone. Yeah. Or... Yeah, and no one had ever – I never dated anyone before you, so it's not like anyone had really ever showed interest in me. So I didn't know if something was wrong with me and you loved me and thought I was cute because – of loving me or people actually thought I was a child. I didn't know how all of that was. So it was very difficult for me to find somebody just to go kiss. But I do remember we made friends with this girl and she had been there with some, she had been on spring break with some of her friends, but she was kind of like the third wheel type situation with them. Mm -hmm. And so me and you became really like close with her quickly And I remember after the club, I think the first night, or maybe it was the second night, because we were there maybe two or three nights, she came back to our hotel. And I remember you guys being a little bit flirty, but nothing ever happened with her. But I remember being in that situation, and it was me and you and another girl in our bed, and I was like, this could happen. This is crazy to me because 
I've never been with anyone else. I've never kissed anybody else. Maybe I'm going to kiss someone else for the first time. Like maybe I'm going to get to experience that. And then I don't know exactly what all happened, but we were all just tired. Nothing else ever happened. Neither one of us knew how to, I don't want to say put a move on somebody, but talk to somebody about all of that. But we did tell her that we were hoping on spring break just to kiss some other people because we'd never done that before. Yeah. I had asked her or texted her the next day. I think you texted her. And and asked if she would kiss you. And it ended up that she just felt weird about it. Well, she said yeah. Oh, yeah. She said yeah. And then that night whenever we met up with her, she was saying, oh, I just feel a little bit uncomfortable with it because... You guys are married. I know you said you're okay with it, but well, I we said it's married. Or yeah, you guys, yeah, yeah, but I I don't feel comfortable with it, and so that yeah. kind of fell apart. Uh, <laughs> I do remember kissing at least one or two girls randomly throughout the weekend at the club or whatever it was. And I remember because there's lots of flashing at spring break and yeah. stuff and. You had, or we had never even seen boobs in real yeah. life. So that was Besides crazy. Yours. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you never seen that. Uh, you go seeing like a hundred pairs in one weekend. That's kind of a, a new experience for sure. <laughs> so that's kind of our initiation, I guess we could say, into this type of lifestyle. And so that was spring break when we were 21, mm-hmm. maybe 22. Mm-hmm. And then that summer, we were planning on going to Vegas. Mm -hmm. So we took a trip to Vegas, we drove there, and decided that we wanted to go to a strip club. And there's also these day clubs and topless pools. So we went to one of the topless pools, was it Venetian, I believe? It was the Venus pool at Caesars Palace. That's right. (laughs) And so I remember... So clearly, now you'll take your top off so fast. I've seen you do it a billion times, like yeah. in lifestyle situations, but you were so nervous to take your top off. So we were at this pool, we had drank some in our hotel room, we were sitting down there, and then finally, after maybe 40 or 50 minutes, because no other girls were topless. No, there was one. But there not was, the beginning. Whenever oh, we first yeah, got yeah, there, yeah. you were the only one, which is not normal for pools in Vegas. Normally, those topless pools, we've been back. And there's usually tons of girls that are topless. Not really. I wouldn't say tons of girls. There was also maybe only, what, eight people Yeah, so it wasn't that busy. But I remember that you took your top off and you were so nervous about it. And then later, one other girl did end up showing up and she ended up taking her top off. Yeah. And I remember you asked me, hey, should we just go back to our room or you want to stay a little bit longer? I was like, let's say like 15 more minutes and then we'll go back to our room. And maybe around 10 minutes later, that girl that was topless was with her. I don't know if they were, I don't know if they're married or they 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 were married. married. At least engaged. Yeah. And they were close to our age. So so they must have been 22, 23, something like that. And we were probably 22. Um, And she came over and congratulated you on being topless. Yeah. (laughs) And I remember that. That You're sounds like, awkward. It, it really awkward. wasn't awkward. Yeah. She came over with her husband. She kind of floated over, um, hugging her husband. And we should give them names. So we're going to name them Stephanie and Chase. So okay. Stephanie was hugging Chase. And uh-huh. they both floated over, kind of walked over to us. And she said, I just wanted to come over here and congratulate you on being the only other topless girl here. And we're the only ones. Something like that. It was cute. It was really cute. So I do want to say before we even got to Vegas on the drive here, we had talked about things that we were okay with happening, just like we did with spring break. And at that point, we were even looking up what... uh, swingers clubs were and since we had talked about having a threesome and you had said it you thought it might be okay that if you were oh i don't even know how to say this so yeah i think what you're trying to say is i had said that it seemed fair if you were comfortable with me doing stuff with another girl 
and that would be enjoyable for both of us. I also thought it'd be fair for you to do stuff with another guy, and I thought that'd be enjoyable for both of us as well. I want it to be a mutual experience for both of us to be able to experience something since we never experienced anything at all. Yes. And so we had talked about we weren't going to try to make anything happen. But if for some if some reason a foursome were to fall into our lap, we were okay doing like a full swap. We didn't even know what that that's what that was called. But we were we just were, okay having sex with another couple uh-huh. in the same room. And I, yeah, at that point, we didn't know what swingers were. We didn't know what there were swingers clubs, really. Uh, we did. We looked it up. We didn't know what this whole thing was called. And mm-hmm. I think we said, is it called swingers? Yeah. Something like that. We looked up swingers club. Yeah, we looked yeah. it up, but we didn't understand anything. So there is a swingers club in uh, Vegas that we said it might be cool to go there so we talked about it but then we ended up going to the strip club yeah anyway but anyway so yeah now that you guys kind of know what happened we would t- did talk about it before we were open to something happening if it fell in our lap so fast forward to the pool she and uh her husband come over and she's talking to us we really really get along find out we're about the same age and then stephanie has the same occupation as jace and i which is a healthcare occupation so we just really clicked yeah and uh we ended up hanging out that entire pool day and then yeah we stayed longer but i remember so there's this thing and it sounds sketchy but it's called my free vegas passes and basically (laughs) there's there's promoters that have to fill clubs and they have an option for strip clubs so and you can get them for free they basically put you on a list so we were going to be able to go to a strip club that night for free. So we had said, hey, we were wanting to go to the strip club tonight. And they said, oh, my gosh, we want to go to a strip club, too. And, and it like, was their first time going, too. They had said that they would never done – we ended up talking about how we'd never done anything with anyone else. Like they had been together for five, six, seven years, something mm-hmm. like that, a really long time. And they were each other's first everything, as were we. It's we crazy. Had ne- yeah. We had never been to a strip club before. They said they haven't. And somehow even a swingers club got brought up, and they said they wanted to go to that, too. So everything was just really – weird yeah (laughs) in a good way yeah and so i remember us saying okay well why don't we break you know we can go take showers meet each other later yeah and you guys can come to our hotel and then we can go to the club later or the strip club club, the strip club later yeah we said we were gonna go to strip club again yeah so then what happened was me and you we went you know got all cleaned up and we went to Cheesecake Factory at Caesar's Palace, which is one of my favorite cheesecake factories in the world. I, I just do love this. <laughs> especially at Caesar's. You get to walk through and have, you know, like all of the cool Clouds. ceilings painted. It's just such a cool experience. Um, so we were at Cheesecake Factory. And I remember sitting across from you and I said, I can't believe this, but I think something could actually happen. Are you OK with something happening if it were to happen? Yeah. And you said – yeah, yeah, I am. And I said, okay, because I, I didn't want to push it, this on either one of us. Mm-hmm. But I was like, to me, this seems like it's falling in our lap. This seems like what we talked about. If it fell into our laps, let's let it happen. But do you still want to do that now that it's actually possibly an option? Because we had talked about stuff happening, but it was never actually an option before yeah. until this. And we didn't know how to make something happen. No. So the fact that this just fell in our lap was crazy. Yeah. And we had also said, even if something happens, because we had – Wanted to do something full swap. So we said full sex was okay. Full but, sex. Full sex. <laughs> <laughs> we probably called it that. Yeah, full sex. Um, but if we're done with everything or if there was any uncomfortable uncomfortability, is that a word, at all or at the last second we didn't want to or whatever it was, it was okay to put a full stop to everything. Yeah. And it wasn't and gonna be, yeah. if anything happened and we did – full sex with them <laughs> um, but we <laughs> yeah if we feel soft with them then if it was awkward between us we were going to put this memory in the past and move on with our life like it had never happened yeah I mean, because right. we want our relationship to be you know perfect even after the full sex <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> so we finished up at Cheesecake Factory, head yeah. back to our hotel, mm-hmm. and then and we were staying at Caesars. Yes, and Chase and Stephanie texted us saying that they couldn't make it to the strip club because they had promised their friends that they would go to that big globe thing. Mm-hmm. I don't even the stratosphere. I don't think that's what it's called. Oh. It's like it's like it's like the Ferris wheel that has the big orb looking things. Yeah. I don't know what that's called. They came up to our room before we went to the strip club, and oh, we and were did drinking they tell us together. That and yeah. Oh, they didn't text us. They told us that. That's yeah, that's they right. were like, "Hey, we're really sorry. We have to meet our friends because they they were going to move there later. So they had a lot of friends who lived right outside of Vegas. They said we said we were going to meet our friends here, but we could come back and hang out with you guys more after." You guys go to circle after we go meet up with our friends. That's right. That's right. But we ended up starting to drink like pretty heavily, all of us. And I remember you and her got naked. You started taking each other's <laughs> dresses off, started making out with each other. And me and him were like, oh, holy shit. Like, this is crazy. I don't know what's going on. It's like a porn in real life. And I remember just watching that happen. And I thought it was so hot, so fun to see that. And then... They're like, well, I'm really sorry. We actually have to go because we have to meet our friends. And they said, okay, well, so why don't you come back afterwards? And we can see what the rest of the night brings. They said, okay. So they went to the Ferris wheel place and me and you went to the strip club. But the crazy thing is that free passes, but we paid nothing for this. They sent us a party bus. Like I bet you could have fit 15 people on the party bus. Yeah. With a stripper pole in the middle of it, the disco lights, everything. It just for us. Just us. And we walk out there to get off the bus. I think they even said, is it what? just you guys? Yeah. We're like, yeah, it's just us. I said, okay. We're like 21. So naive. Yeah. So, so shy. we literally just sat. Like it was almost like you're at the airport and we were going from one terminal to another. <laughs> we just sat there next to each other, kind of drunk, like waiting to get like as a free Uber. Like it was so funny. This podcast is brought to you by us, Bella and Jace. Have you ever been at a party or hanging out with your friends or maybe you've made some new friends and you don't quite know how to get things started and the conversation's dying a little bit and you just want to spice things up? Well, we have the perfect game for you. It's an icebreaker game and it's the ultimate adult party game. It's called Foreplay the Game and you can find more information about that at foreplay.com slash games. We also have an introduction to swinging course that is talks about all the things that we wish we would have known when we first got into lifestyle to help us really navigate it a lot better. If you're interested in that, you can check it out at foreplay.com slash learn. We also have swinger lifestyle merch and accessories, and you can check that out at foreplay.com slash shop. All right, now back to the show. We got to the strip club, which we went to Sapphire, which is the biggest strip club in the United States. We got one drink, and it was hella expensive it was hella expensive for one drink especially when we are on a college budget yeah um <laughs> i just remember it being just the worst drink too yeah a vodka water or something a vodka soda i and swear it, it just tasted like soda There's it was no way. yeah it was no good anyways we were there for maybe five minutes yeah. no maybe 10 minutes maybe like 10 because we had to yeah. finish the drink That's so okay. maybe so maybe 15 <laughs> minutes we didn't like chug it we Sat there. I think we watched maybe three girls dance on stage. It was pretty. Maybe it was early. Maybe I don't so. Know, but it wasn't very busy. And I remember I didn't. It think was huge. Any, it was huge. But there wasn't. It wasn't full. And we didn't see any girls that we thought were super, super. Cute ar- or yeah. Anything. And so yeah. we didn't even get a lap dance. It was. <laughs> It was an underwhelming experience. And that was our first. But, club but it was still a new experience. Yeah. So it was kind of cool. And I mean. Then we got back on the bus and they drove us back. They waited for us and everything. So, I mean, it was like a free Uber, which was kind of (laughs) cool. So then I remember we got back to our hotel room and we were still so – I also think the other reason that we weren't so into the strip club was we had this other thing waiting back for us. Right, And we were so into that that I couldn't care about less about strippers up there, you know, yeah. I'd seen a hundred boobs on spring break. So I was like seasoned <laughs> pro at that time. <laughs> and so me and you started having sex because we were so turned on about the whole thought of in it. our room, in our yeah, room. Once yeah. We got back. Yeah. Once you got back to the room and then maybe 20 minutes after that, our, our friends came back and they were hanging out. We were talking and then I don't know exactly how it all got started, but we started having same room sex with them. 
Also didn't know that's what it was called at the same time or yeah. how that time, but so we had two beds. Yeah. But we were having sex on one bed. We were? Yeah. Oh, that's right. Were you there? <laughs> I thought that there, no. This they was went, the second I time know. we've told this story. I know. I always <laughs> forgot. I thought that there was, I thought they had sex on the other bed and it was just in the same room. I didn't think it was same bed, same room sex. No, that room, that room only had one bed and had a couch on the other side. Oh, see, I'm mixing it up with the second part. And I yeah. always do this. Yeah. Okay, got it. So that's right. We had same bed sex with them. So we were doing it. I was doing it with Bella. And doing they, it? I was, I was having sex with Bella and they were having sex. And it was so hot because I'd never seen anything else like that. That was such a new experience. And I remember after we finished, she came over and kissed me. And you kissed him afterwards. And I was like, oh, my God. I told him, I was like, you're only the second person that's ever kissed me or something like that. I mean, it was oh, like, it was yeah, cute, yeah, though. Yeah, it, it wasn't was. in, like, a pathetic way. It was a cute way. <laughs> yeah. uh, it was cute. So <laughs> I remember we were still in college. I think they might have been in college as well. They were, yeah. And so we neither one was. of us. She was in school. We were both in school for the same thing. Yeah, we were both about yeah. to graduate the next year. So we said... We don't have to be back. We had a car. They lived not too far away, and they had driven to Vegas as mm-hmm. well. And so we said, would you guys want to stay an extra night and see what happens tomorrow? Because we're interested in maybe more things happening. Mm-hmm. And they said yes. And then we, neither one of us had a ton of money. So we found a deal oh for Treasure Island for $100. <laughs> okay, nice hotel. And we said, we'll pay 50 you pay 50 Deal. And so, then your drunk ass over here decides to use my credit card with your name. Not, and, it, and it went through. So the next day, we woke up. We rode over there. We drove together. Well, not drove together. We followed each other to Treasure Island. And we got there. And they were like, yeah, we canceled that reservation because the credit card name didn't match the name that it was signed up under. And we weren't married, so they didn't have the same last name. Yeah. So it was two different names. Like, so like someone basically fra- did fraud. <laughs> so, they, so they canceled it. And this was EDC weekend. And we mm-hmm. didn't even know what EDC was. So EDC is Electric Daisy Carnival. It's the biggest rave event in Vegas. In North America. Oh, is it? I uh-huh. didn't even know that. But it was that weekend. We had no idea what was going on. We were looking around so naive. We were like, why is everyone dressed like this? Why is everyone so Vegas crazy. Like- <laughs> yeah. And so that's why we couldn't get another room because it was completely booked because of EDC. So yeah. we we, we wanted- booked. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, we asked them. We said, we still want something to happen. We still want to get a room with you guys. Stay what do you night. want to do? Yeah. So I remember looking up on like one of us was on Expedia on our cell phone trying to find a room. And we found one. Another room. The only other room for $100 because we both had around 50 bucks that we were willing to <laughs> leverage at that point if you want to call it that. A 21-year-old broke ass. <laughs> yeah. And so we said, okay, we'll do this one. And it was the Riviera. <laughs> Riviera's not even there anymore. They t- tore it down like four years ago. The Riviera was the very first hotel on the Strip, I believe. That's yeah, what it it's was, something right? like that. It was so bad. So we ended up... And they, I don't think it had, had renovation since it was built in, what, 1950. <laughs> it was so awful. But we, but we didn't know that because their hotel yeah. pictures on the website didn't look that bad. And so we went to Riviera <laughs> and we, <laughs> we went to the room. I, I so clearly remember looking out the window... We got there. I always look. I always go to the window, especially in Vegas. Like, look at the city. <laughs> we looked out the window. It's like off the strip. You look out the window, and the the pool was like full of junk, and it was no water. Like it was off limit. Like you couldn't even swim in the pool in Vegas. They didn't have a pool at the hotel. I remember, and it looked like a motel. It was awful it really was but we ended up going into the room showered took a nap we all were emotionally drained yeah. i remember we were like crying yeah you <laughs> and stephanie were crying because we was like i just want stuff to happen and we're having so much fun and we and i think you guys felt back you're the ones who fucked up because me and him were over there just hanging out and you're like we got a great hotel room we're yeah. so excited we're like oh yeah treasure island <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. But, okay, so we finished taking a nap and everything. Yeah. We get up, 
and we I think it must have been later in the day, and we were like, let's get drunk. Yeah. Because we got to fix this hotel. We're going to drink enough to turn this into <laughs> Caesars. Yeah. So this hotel room had two different beds. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yep. You're at the right hotel yeah. right now. <laughs> um, how did that – I honestly – I think that we both – I think that we were just taking shot after shot, drinking. Just – that's just what we were doing. And then I think probably one of us was like, so are we going to make something happen? Or? No. I remember we were sitting on the bed – all next to each other and then almost like a spin the bottle type thing we didn't actually spin a bottle but i just remember each of us making out with each other yeah well like me making out with her her making out with you me making out with him Uh and then somebody said oh i've never had a three-way kiss before Mm -hmm. right oh that's right that's right yep 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 yep. so i don't remember who did it first but we each had three-way kisses Mm -hmm. me and her with you and then me and her with chase yeah and that's how things got started, I mm-hmm. believe. And so, did we? We kind of separated into. I two think we separate kind of separated, and you guys went on to like the right bed. If you were standing looking at the bed, and me and her were on the left bed. And I remember me and her making out, her getting on top of me. We took each other's clothes off, and I was kind of like feeling her body for the first time, which I also remember that was so sexy because i had never felt anybody else before like everything i'd ever touched had always been you that was the first time feeling up anybody else or anything like that and then i remember while we were doing that i looked over at you and you guys were kissing and getting undressed i was like oh this is so hot like i'm really enjoying this so far yeah and and i now in the lifestyle you know we talk about rules and all that before but because this was just so organically happening i don't and Chase and Stephanie didn't know what full swap was and they didn't know. We just went in. Yeah, full sex. We just knew that we were okay with doing everything. We were okay with experiencing it with each other because we had only been together and they had only been together. And they had the same thing as well. Exactly. Yeah. So that's how kind of before all of this got started, we did have that conversation before. Yeah. And so I'm on the other bed with him. I remember him being on top of me and making out very heavily and I don't know how much time had passed but we looked over and it looked like she was riding you <laughs> well right yeah because we, yeah. we said we were okay doing everything yeah, yeah, so yeah. I remember she did not like going down on people very much like that wasn't her favorite thing but I remember she we were her were making out and then she started going down on me oh. and I was like this is so hot I remember looking over you yeah you guys were like kissing while she was doing that and then she was like, okay, so can, like, I ride you or something, something along the lines of that. And so, you know, we got out of condom and she just started <laughs> riding me. And then I remember both you guys looking over, you're like, wait, are you guys doing it already? We were like, I guess so. <laughs> and then they're like, oh, you guys were like, oh, okay. And I and think so- I said to him, well, I guess we should fuck too. And so then... Uh, he, we got found him and everything, and then he went and me missionary. Uh-huh. And I feel like it was such a rush. I just remember thinking, this is fun, but I'm not even worried about yeah. him. I was thinking about you, but I was thinking how you were having fun, too. That's exactly what I was and feeling. And I just felt like, why do I have no jealousy? And it was just fun. I just remember it being... A crazy thought going in my head. That's that I, I thought. I thought a very similar thought to you, and I remember looking over and seeing you guys having sex. And I was like, "This is really hot." Like, yeah, this is a turn on to me. And I look up, and this girl's riding me. I'm like, "This is so hot that we're doing this together." Yeah, and this is a new experience, and this is fun, and it felt different to me than sex with you. Like, sex with you felt like there was all of this passion and love in it, and this felt like sex. I just yeah, felt it like just sex. Felt like it just felt it felt different. It just felt fun, and I I remember she wrote me for a while, and I have to apologize. I don't remember a whole bunch of the exact details because it's been six years since it happened. We've had you know a few ex- few experiences in between uh, then and now, <laughs> and I remember turning her over and fucking her missionary for a little bit, and then I I know that I took it out of her and whenever I came that's I think the only two positions we did I took it out of her 
and you came over and gave me a blowjob. That's how I came. I remember that for the first time. But you tell me what you guys were doing. I know. You, I think you said he could like come a lot of times or something. Yeah, uh, yeah you, he, tell, you, he tell, had, you tell your experience part from that. I also can't remember a play-by-play because it's been so long. I can't remember the exact positions and everything. But he was, I think he was on testosterone because her sex drive was so much that he had to be on it to keep up with her. Something like that. But he had a lot of sex drive and he almost was animalistic whenever he fucked me and this is even to this day now he is probably the most is animalistic even the word he was just like really into it really really going at it with me (laughs) and I'm pretty sure he came a few times something about how they could because he was on testosterone, he could come multiple, multiple, multiple times. I don't know. It was all in the condom, though, because I never did any. I never sucked his dick at that point yet, I don't think. But I don't remember the positions. I just remember him on top of me and him doing me missionary. I don't even know if we did doggy at that point. Yeah. I don't, how long were we even having sex for? I Not don't that know. long? I have no clue. I feel like I don't even remember. I have no clue. But then I remember I said, you came over, you gave me a blowjob, mm-hmm. and I came. And then I remember that we're also just hanging out there and then i don't know why we did it but you and him walked to go get a snack to bring back up to upstairs yeah or, we separated yeah and, it, and we I said we were okay why. with it we were yeah, comfortable yeah, yeah. with it but i don't know why we did either so you and her stayed in their room and we went down and this was actually really fun because me and chase walked to the elevator and then as the elevator closed he like went straight and made out with me and was pushing me against the wall and we had to make out fast and long before the next door (laughs) opens you and I haven't even done that to this day so that was fun and there was just a lot of textual tension there and we went and got I don't know food maybe and then we came back upstairs and you opened the and we opened the door and you and Stephanie were making out. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You guys got back and me and her were naked because I was saying, oh, it's so fun that we can be friends, but also have this sexual chemistry. And so me and her were making out. We didn't want to have sex until you guys got back. And so we were just naked <laughs> you, making out. <laughs> um, and then I remember saying, I've always wanted to have a double blowjob. And she wasn't huge into, I said, going down on people. But since it was a new experience for all of us, she was like, okay, I'll do that. And so me and you and her, you guys were going down on me. And I remember watching it and I was thinking, this is so hot. This is what I've always thought it would be like. And it's still one of my favorite things lifestyle wise. But going back to the very first time, it was just such a different – it was just so sexy. It was just so new, mm-hmm. I guess. And then we switched, me and him, and so you guys started going down on him. Mm-hmm. And then I think at that point we were like, let's fuck or, you know, something like that. We th- At this point we thought it would be a good idea to push the beds together. So we yeah, remember, we made like one jumbo bed. Yeah, you and him pushed the beds together. And even though we pushed the beds together, we still only fucked separately. Yeah. We didn't she do... She didn't love girl on girl stuff. Yeah, either. that's right. We kissed, but we didn't do... I think you went down on each other. Yes, because we wanted to try it. Yeah. And I remember her being... I... That was cool. But, but it wasn't her thing. Yeah. Yeah. And so... We didn't do any for some positions. Also, we probably didn't even know how. There wasn't a lot of touching between all of us together. I just remember pushing the beds together and then us fucking separately again. Yeah. And, oh, I remember holding your hand. Mm-hmm. That's like something. Yeah, I think maybe mm-hmm. like, maybe he was fucking a missionary and she was riding me and we looked over and like held hands. I think that was like the closest yeah. touch thing we had. And you made me come again. I don't remember. He probably and, came a gazillion times. I know I yeah. never got came on. Yeah. And but. I really feel like that kind of was the experience. That was our, yeah, that was, so that we was went our, into, I mean, being newbies to straight full swap. 
Yeah. And it was that they, it was their first full swap too. <laughs> yeah. And so I, she was the first person I kissed and that was the day before that. Yeah. <laughs> so it was a very quick jump, but I want to quickly talk about the after of this. That's pretty much the story as far as the actual full swap goes. So I apologize. It's been six years. We've fucked a few couples in between now. And so I can't, I can't remember all the details of exactly what happened, but that was the experience. But I want to talk about how we felt afterwards because I feel like that's an important part of the story. Mm-hmm. So we had an 18-hour drive back home from Vegas. Right. And I remember – I think we talked 16 hours. I was going to say 16. About – This experience. Mm -hmm. And we both said how fun it was and how we felt like the whole thing that we had said about we wondered what else was out there and like what else was there to experience. We said this was such a fun thing to experience together. And we definitely want to do it again. And we replayed it over and over again in our head and talked about this part that she was doing to me or this that he was doing to you. And I remember just talking about it. Yeah, the after talking is so sexy because you can relive things, but also things that you did, I didn't know happened. So Uh it was almost a retelling of stuff. Anyways. And I remember the biggest thing for me was I said, that made me feel closer to you. I don't understand how exactly But after watching that and doing that, I feel closer to you. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know – I didn't. that doesn't make sense to me. I was like, how could this be a feeling? How do I feel closer to you after having sex with somebody else? But we did. Yeah, it just made me want you even more. Mm -hmm. I don't even know to this day why do we even feel like that. I just think it's – I think it's because (laughs) you have this first of all – no jealousy between you because yes, you can't. It's and a then trust. after having sex with somebody else, I always want to have sex with you because it's like I want to go back to you because you're my everything. Mm-hmm. And that was a fun thing, but it's there's not the passion, there's not the love, there's not that connection that you have with your significant other. It's more fucking, which is fun, but there's something different. And I feel like Having sex with somebody else is a fun experience together, but then it makes me appreciate you more. And I feel like that's how I feel closer to you in a mm-hmm. way. And it always makes sex fun afterwards. If you've never, if this is your first time listening to anything about this, if everything is good between you afterwards, you know, and you guys are both actually okay, truthfully okay, and you felt happy with it, you just have this connection, this different kind of connection. And I don't know how to explain it if you've never done it, but it's just a different kind of connection. And it's just so cool. And I remember saying, I, if you wanted to, I think that this is something I'd, I want to do for the rest of my life. And like, not all the time, but like, see if there's things out there like this, like more couples like this, like more people we can meet like this. Yeah. And I think you were like, that sounds amazing to me or something like that but yeah, tell me I how you were feeling like anything different or anything you need to add on how I was feeling or no I felt the same exact way it was just crazy how I felt close closer to you and how I wanted you even more and I think you're right it's just the the trust the fact that there is no jealousy and that we can trust each other that much that we can share each other in this sexual way and still have more even sexual chemistry and more love for each other and more trust. Um, I just really loved it. And so we, I remember looking up clubs. Are there more clubs like this? What is this called? I think at that point we lo- found maybe Adult Friend Finder yeah. or SDC. Which will get us into the next podcast. Yes. But I do want to say one more thing. <laughs> yeah. So... Maybe four hours into the drive, we got a text message from them. Well, this is after, I mean, we left each other very, you know, on a high. There wasn't anything we we said we had such a great experience. We, both of us, well, both couples, I mean, Mm -hmm. we were glad that it happened with each other. We were sad to to leave each other. We really, if we were ever in Vegas again and they were actually moving there, like we should hang out again, something like that. Yeah. So then for, you know, four hours after into the car ride, then we get a text from them. Yeah. And (laughs) 
it said something along the lines of, we really, really enjoyed you guys. We were just going to say, we want you to be our only couple. And the way they were saying it almost implied like a relationship type thing where they were saying, we don't want to fuck any other couples. We don't want you to fuck any other couples. We want to be like exclusive with each other. And me and you were both like, we just experienced this together. We're just getting into this new life of new opportunities of new experiences I don't want to be in a relationship with anybody. I have my everything in you. I don't need to be with another couple. Like, I don't need that. And so I remember me and you were both just very. We were just taken aback. Yeah. And we didn't really know how to handle it. I mean, we were honest and said we were just getting into this. We actually want to experience this with more people. And we didn't want to be exclusive. It sounds like they now knowing, I didn't know what polyamory was then, but it sounded like they wanted a polyamorous relationship. But we weren't even in the same state. We were across the country from yeah, each other. It so it didn't, didn't it make it, sense. To yeah. Me. And then it was but also, we, we have a different Facebook now for lifestyle, lifestyle stuff. stuff. But at that point, it was just our normal Facebook because we weren't, you know, full sex in at that point. <laughs> and so, <laughs> see, that joke is so funny. <laughs> um, and so we added them on our normal Facebook. And I remember he, like two days later, posted a video of two turtles fucking on your Facebook wall. A tur- a tur- two turtles fucking and orgasming on my public Facebook wall. Yeah. And the caption that something. Like LOL. Yeah. Something really odd. It was just strange. Yeah. And so we were both saying, okay, this is kind of strange. Um, we've never talked to them again. So we replied that time to say we didn't want to be exclusive They've invited us randomly like three years later one time, invite us to come out to Vegas to hang out with them again. And we were just like, you know, I don't think that's our thing. Yeah. But we really haven't talked to them again. And I hope they're doing well. I hope they're doing well. Such a sweet couple. Nothing against them at all. It just, it. It was interesting for our first experience and our first couple to to, to go that way. Yeah, and no, no other couples <laughs> ever say anything like that. Yeah, no. So, but also uh, because the other couples that we've met we, we are in the lifestyle and know what the lifestyle is and are looking for that. I mean, they were just like us. They didn't know mm-hmm. what was what all of this was. Yeah. But anyways, that wraps up our very first experience. Yes. Newbie straight into full swap. Yeah. The second person, the second girl you ever kissed, yeah. you fucked her while I was there. Yeah. <laughs> So, so we were recorded this. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We really are trying to say like less and less. It is a bad. I'm worse than you are, I think. But we both have a bad habit of saying like. So I apologize if I said like a few times in there. I'm sure I did. But we really hope you guys liked. <laughs> we hope you guys liked that. Um, <laughs> why don't you hit them with a quick outro of where to find us? And that's going to be it for this podcast. If you'd like to support the show, you can leave us a five-star review wherever you're listening to our podcast. All our information will be listed in the show notes below. You can email us at foreplaypodcast at gmail.com. That's the number four, O-U-R, playpodcast at gmail.com with any questions or comments or head to foreplay.com slash ask. We have a digital online game called Foreplay the Game. It's the ultimate adult party game for the sexually inclined and perfect for breaking the ice. You can find more information at foreplay.com slash games. We give away one free game of Foreplay Plus a month to a listener who writes a review, so just screenshot your review and email it to us for a chance to win. We have swinger and lifestyle clothing and accessories at foreplay.com slash shop and courses at foreplay.com slash learn. And we also have a Facebook group called Foreplay Community and would love for you to join at facebook.com slash group slash foreplay community. We're on Twitter at Foreplay Podcast and Instagram at Hey Villa Luna and at Hey J Spee. I have an OnlyFans which you can find at OnlyFans.com slash Bella Luna VIP or my free one at Bella Luna Free. Lastly, we're on Cassidy and SDC at Bella and Jace and you can get a free 30-day full membership by using our link. Again, all our information will be listed in the show notes below and we thank you so much for listening to our podcast. See you in the next one. Bye!